In this lesson, we're going to explore the two disk options available to EC2. The two options are ephemeral or instant store, those terms are used interchangeably in AWS, which is local disk. This is disk that's given to you for free when you provision an EC2 instance. There's also EBS or elastic block store. This is network attached disk that you can provision and attach to a single EC2 instance. If we look at the option comparison, let's start off by describing how they work. Here we have EC2 servers sitting in a single rack somewhere inside of an Amazon data center. In another place in that data center, we have a rack of servers that are providing EBS functionality. This is essentially just a big network attached storage device. Inside of each of these EC2 servers on our left, we have a hypervisor. Let's blow that up a little bit. This hypervisor takes the machine's local resources, such as CPU, RAM, network card, and disk, and makes those available as individual pieces to each VM so that each VM sitting above the hypervisor has access to a part of underlying hardware. When we talk about ephemeral or instant store, we're talking about that disk. Let's look at some of the advantages of ephemeral or some of the properties. First of all, it's local to EC2, so it's very, very fast. The size is static and it's set by the instance type. Generally, the larger instance you get, the larger ephemeral disk you get. Its lifetime is tied to the instance itself. There's no way to stop the ephemeral and store it off somewhere. It's optimized for sequential I.O. It comes free with your instance, and the user has to provision it. The reason Amazon did this is because a lot of users saw the disk just laying there before, and they'd start using it. When they realized that their machine crashed and there was no way to get that disk back, a lot of folks got very angry. So Amazon decided that if you're going to shoot yourself in the foot, you have to load the gun. You have to provision the ephemeral disk when you spin up your instances. The EBS, in contrast, exists in a remote rack, which means that there's network I.O. between the EC2 instance and the EBS volume. This network I.O. is charged. The user size of each EBS volume is adjustable. Its lifetime is independent of the instance itself. It's best for random I.O. It does have extra cost associated with it for both storage and I.O. into and out of the EC2 instance. The user again has to provision this disk. But this disk allows for snapshots, and it also allows for provisioned I.O. One thing to think about, you would think that the EBS volumes are overall slower since they exist in another rack. But because these EBS volumes are so fast, they're actually comparable, in many cases faster, than the EC2 instance store. Let's look at some of the commonalities between these disk types. They both appear to the EC2 as local storage. They're both POSIX compliant block storage. You can think of them as a three and a half inch disk that you would just slide into a server and provision. Both of them exist in a single availability zone. They can each be formatted to any file system you choose. They can each be mountable at any directory you choose, such as the server's web root. The IO out of the EC2 instance in both cases is charged. S3 I.O. is always going to be your cheapest. They can be striped and they can be mirrored with RAID 01. But in the case of EBS, the disks are already redundant. Mirroring makes no sense, but striping may. Either can be used as the boot device. When we talk about a boot device, we're saying that when an EC2 instance spins up, it has to read its information from somewhere. That somewhere could either be ephemeral disk or EBS but there are very serious advantages to using EBS for the boot drive. Let's look at some of these. Ephemeral is a legacy offering. It cannot be stopped or restarted. Its lifetime is tied to the instance itself. It has a very slow boot time, which is typically measured in minutes, and it's free, which is its only advantage. EBS, on the other hand, was added in 2009. It enables stop, restart, and snapshot capabilities. It has a very fast boot time, which is typically measured in seconds or dozens of seconds. The thing to note here is that if at all possible, you probably want EBS backed. If you're thinking of using Instant Store, you need to have a very good reason. Some of the drawbacks to ephemeral disk are that it is number one volatile. The disk goes away when your instance goes away. It cannot be shared across instances. It's tied to that single EC2 server. It is not redundant, and because of that, you may want to mirror multiple ephemeral disks together. There are severe limitations as a boot device. It's slow to boot. You cannot stop and restart it. 
Let's look at some of the use cases. Basically, any data that you can easily re-replicate, such as code which can be pulled from your repo on boot or with user data, such as a scratch or temporary disk. Images, CSS, and static assets may be a good choice, but you typically want to use S3 there. And Ephemeral also comes with an SSD option in the high I.O. instances. Many folks use this for NoSQL databases. You can get up to 120,000 random read IOPS and about 10 to 90,000 random write IOPS. It is, however, still volatile. If you need to store this data permanently, you need to take care of that inside of your NoSQL cluster. Let's look at some of the EBS use cases. The first and best case is as a boot volume. You can do hourly, daily, and weekly snapshots. The snapshots are stored durably in S3. You can also use it whenever you need extra storage. You can provision between one gigabyte and one terabyte per EBS volume. And you can attach multiple EBS to a single instance. The sweet spot typically maxes out at about six to eight EBS drive volumes. Again, this is limited by the EC2 I.O. The larger instance you have, generally the more volumes you can attach. You cannot, however, do the reverse. You cannot attach multiple EC2 to a single EBS. A single EBS volume can only be attached to a single EC2 at any given time. You can stripe multiple EBS together for fast performance. You may also want to consider using EBS as a database. Really, the only time you want to consider this is if you decide you cannot use RDS or DynamoDB or SimpleDB or another one of the offerings that Amazon provides. In this chapter, we covered the two POSIX compliant disk options, which are ephemeral or instance store, which is local disk, and EBS, which is network attached storage.